Myself and You by Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T There are only myself and you in the world There are only myself and you Tis clear then that I unto you should be kind And that you unto me should be true And if I unto you could be always kind And you unto me could be true then the criminal courts might all be adjourned, and the sword would have nothing to do. A few fertile acres are all that I need, not more than a hundred or two, and the great wide earth holds enough, I am sure, enough for myself and for you. The sweet air of heaven is free to us all, upon all for the rain and the dew, and the glorious sun in his cycle of light shines alike on myself and on you. The infinite love is as broad as the sky and as deep as the ocean's blue. We may breathe it, bathe in it, live in it. I, it is life for myself and for you. And the Christ who came when the angels sang will come if the song we renew and reign in his kingdom, the Prince of Peace, reigning over myself and you. O oh, then, may I be unto you always kind, and be you unto me always true. So the land may rest from its turmoil and strife, and the sword may have nothing to do. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. By the Sea by Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson An Argument for Peace You do but dream. The world will never see such time as this you picture, when the sword shall lie inglorious in its sheath, and be no more a valorous deed's incentive or reward. The ocean breezes fanned them where they sat, at leisure from life's conflict, toil, and care. Yet not unthoughtful nor unmindful that in all its weal and woe they held their share. The rose-like charm and pride of earliest youth a chastening touch had toned to lovelier hue. And the white soul of purity and truth looked out alike from eyes of brown and blue. I covet your fair hope, he spake again. I cannot share it. All the hoary past denies that mightier prowess of the pen the poet claims, and proves it still surpassed by sword and musket and the arts of war. And twere not so, the query will return, albeit such conflict we must all abhor, how should the fires of patriotism burn? Their flames are kindled by the flash of arms, and fed by recount of heroic deed. The sanguinary story has its charms, though the heart sicken over it as we read. And what were Greece without her marathon, or Rome had not her Caesars fought and won? How reigns Britannia, empress near and far, but for her Waterloo and Trafalgar? And we know not our souls a quickening thrill at thought of Lexington and Bunker Hill. And with a pride no rival passion mars, Greet we not now our glorious stripes and stars? Yes, friend, our own theory is fine. I grant your outlook far exceedeth mine in excellence and beauty, in its scope embracing that millennial age of bliss the spirit pants for while it chafes in this. I covet, though I cannot share, your hope. My hope, she answered, smiling, is a faith. The kingdoms of this world are yet to be the kingdoms of our blessed Lord, the Christ, Lord of all life through dire and vengeful death, wrought through such sacrifice, unspared, unpriced, his word and purpose must fulfillment see, and realms by mountains bounded or by seas must own allegiance to the Prince of Peace. I yield to none, and as she spoke there sped across the opal beauty of the sea a light-winged vessel bearing at its head the starry emblem of the brave and free. I yield to none in loyalty and love for yon brighter banner, but I hold it still as token to the world 
all else above of peace on earth and unto man good will god gave his land to be the home of man and all that brightens and upbuilds the home uplifts humanity tramp tribe and clan knowing no hearthstone are content to roam but drawing nearer god the man returns and rears his household altar in some quest the feet may wander but the heart still yearns for the soft home light and the quiet rest think yet again good brother is it not from off such altar whether it may glow in princely palace or in lowliest cot that the true flame of country love must flow while that enkindled by the flash of arms is strange fire consuming while it charms lives greece less nobly in her parthenon in what her salons wrote her poets sang than in the ghastly pride of marathon and kindred fields where victor's praises rang and we enriched through commerce letters art forgot our earlier grievances and scars are we not ready for a better part have we not now outgrown our need of wars surely it should be so he made reply the sated earth cries out against the flow of human blood how long how long the cry must pierce the heavens from writhing hearts below but men heed not the glamour and the gain of warfare blind them to its sin and pain they know not pity and they count not cost till armies meet and life and cause are lost would they but listen twere an errand blessed to plead against oppressor for oppressed would they not follow it were joy indeed up the white hills of truth and peace to lead but ah the multitudes are gone astray the powerful of the earth will have their way what profit sister in our prayers and tears why mar the springtime gladness of our years in vain pursuit of universal good in fruitless care for earth's vast brotherhood glad would i grasp such work could i but see or near or far your hoped-for victory whether they hear she answered or forbear tis ours with signal truth to light the skies god's promises and warnings to declare how can men follow if no leader rise o christ shall be the victor o my friend why do we limit his almighty power who sees from far beginning to the end whose day may be an eon or an hour the sea is his he made it and his word can speak its wildest tumult into calm as he may will its deepest founts are stirred or surface ripples breathe a praiseful psalm as well his power the rise and fall the sway of human passion though he suffer long the puny pride of man shall yet obey the mandate of the only wise and strong but god would have the children of his grace in this great reclamation have a share and each in his appointed hour and place must stand or other brow his crown will wear she paused over them as with magic spell for a brief space a holy silence fell then while the sunset crimson of the sky set ocean all ablush he made reply reason and candor justify your claim the infinite is infinite in all the power that touches into life that flame holds earth and heaven subject to his call and at his fiat people rise and fall your dauntless zeal doth shame my coward heart your word of faith my courage doth inspire i see tis only noble to have part in moral contest not to fan the fire of a false glory which must ever feed on souls that perish and on hearts that bleed and this i gather from your earnest plea that souls which walk in light and see the way to heights of truth yet unattained must be forerunners for their lord must work and pray for the morning of the perfect day join we in this sweet service cherish still the trust that gives you courage for the fight your peaceful war on all that's base and ill your patient battle for the pure and right let us press on and mount the hills of light the ocean murmur fell upon the ear sweeter than bird-song or the voice of mirth 
as beamed her answering smile through grateful tears while her lips whispered only peace on earth peace peace the evening zephyrs caught the strain the wavelets sent the word across the sea exultant nature trilled the glad refrain a peace peace the christ is come and peace shall be end of poem this recording is in the public domain at the close of the year by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by hugabug zero zero eight neighbor neighbor prithee stay wherefore hasten on thy way give a moment's heed to me i would ask a thing of thee neighbor days and months have fled seasons one by one have sped and to-night i greet thee here at the passing of the year tis the time of reckoning now with new resolves and annual vow time of straightening ugly crooks and careful balancing of books pardon if i now demand how accounts of thine may stand hast thou rendered fair and true unto every man his due hast thou given timely heed to thy poor brother's need hath thy strong arm been a stay to thy weaker on the way when didst thou a joy impart to thy sister sad at heart when didst thou her grief beguile with the sunshine of thy smile when the heavy laden came didst thou breathe a saviour's name when temptations fierce did prove didst thou whisper of his love when hosts of evil have assailed and against the right prevailed hast thou still undaunted stood pleading for the pure and good when but neighbor this is strange while well, i question comes a change all that i have asked of thee comes for answer back to me comes against my wish and will comes and sets my heart athrill comes with terrors of the law filling me with fear and awe strange transition can it mean the marvel of this shifting scene yes i read the mystery now neighbor mine own soul art thou now my soul tis thine to say how the record stands to-day give account of loss or gain talent used or spent in vain all unwitting how they sped i my listed queries read raised the duty standard high challenged measurement thereby while i queried came a change silent solemn passing strange neighbor glided into mist soul and self were keeping tryst and the queries came anew soul of mine be brave and true lo our books we balance now i have questioned answer thou and a poem this recording is in the public domain risen by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by hugabug zero zero eight he is risen he is risen here his empty tomb you see and he goeth as he told you to the hills of galilee thus to loving loyal women in the centuries agone angel voices told the story of the resurrection morn he is risen he is risen years hand down the glad refrain let the ages on to ages waft the tidings yet again he who near the bethlehem manger lowly child of earth was born king of kings reigns all triumphant since the resurrection morn christ is risen calvary's anguish all the lost world's ransom paid then with tears the hope of israel in the new-made tomb was laid deep and dark the desolation falling with that night forlorn radiant the dawn awakening with the resurrection morn he has risen by this token we with him shall rise again faith shall vanquish doubt and terror joy shall banish grief and pain no more fear of sin's temptation no more dread of hatred's scorn 
Oh, the glory purchased for us on the resurrection morn. Christ is risen, bow before him, to his courts an offering bring. Suffering Lord and Lamb victorious, crown him conqueror, priest, and king. Robe of light for robe of mocking, diadem for crown of thorn. Where's he now, and in his likeness, rise we satisfied immortal in the resurrection morn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Elizabeth Crowned by Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Christine Lehman, Reseda, California Elizabeth of Hungary, a widow at the age of twenty, was sought in marriage by Frederick the Second, Emperor of Germany. She, having taken a vow never to marry again, declined his offer, and devoted her life to deeds of kindness and charity. She died at the age of twenty-four, and was canonized as a saint by Gregory the Ninth. At this ceremony Frederick placed upon her head a golden crown, saying, Since thou wouldst not be crowned as my empress, I crown thee to-day as an immortal queen in the kingdom of God. When once I saw thee, fair yet sad and lone, though wealth and beauty waited at thy hand, I would have crowned thee, saintly one, mine own, glad would have had thee share with me my throne, bride of my heart and empress of my land. But thou wert wedded to thy valiant dead, and to the service of a Christ-like love, so by thy hand the suffering poor were led, and from thy bounty were the hungry fed, till came thy summons to the court above now hast thou passed from tears and pain away thine ear hath caught the heavenly melodies so be it mine with reverent touch to-day on thy fair head this diadem to lay and crown thee queen immortal for the skies end of poem this recording is in the public domain who is sufficient by Hannah Lavinia Bailey, read for LibriVox.org, by Melanie T. Six and thirty little mortals coming to be taught, and mine that most delightful task to rear the tender fort. Merry, mischief loving children, thoughtless, glad, and gay, loving lessons, just a little, dearly loving play. Six and thirty souls immortal coming to be fed needing food convenient for them as their daily bread bright and happy little children innocent and free coming here their lifelong lessons now to learn of me listen to the toilsome routine list and answer them for these things who is sufficient among the sons of men now they at well-known summons cease their busy hum and some with pleasure some reluctant to the schoolroom come comes a little cunning urchin with defiant eye making music with his marbles as he passes by but alas the pretty toys are taken from him soon comes a lisping little beauty scarce five summers old baby voice and blue eyes pleading please miss i'm so cold little one the world is chilly all too cold for thee for its storms our father shield thee and thy refuge be when i turn to caution johnny not to make such noise mary passes earth's an adverb in the passive voice well indeed it must be passive else it is not clear how such open language murder goes unpunished here second reader class reciting lesson verse or prose none in all the class is certain each one thinks he knows well is queried then the difference who can now define answers rob in verse they never finish out the line boy thy thought doth strangely thrill me and as hours roll on here's my heart a solemn query is my day's work done do i make of this my life task prose or idle rhyme do i in the sight of heaven 
finish out the line. Oh, it is too fine a knowledge for our mortal sight, all these restless little creatures how to lead aright. He who prayeth while he worketh, taking lessons still, of the friend of little children, learning all his will. He alone can work before them worthily and well. He alone of life's strange language can the meaning tell. May I then with heart as tender as a little child, lead my flock and father keep them pure and undefiled. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Peace by Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Hugabug008 O blessed peace that floweth like a river, unstayed, unwearied, ever on and on, that hath its fount and spring in Christ the giver, and finds its ocean round the great white throne. O peace of God, that passeth understanding, thou art the answer to my soul's long quest. Doubts, fears, and sins, their serried hosts disbanding, I leave, launch on thy wave, and anchored, Rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Boys and Girls by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Hugabug008. We were seven in all, as the dear rustic maid to the poet so sweetly protested, and together we rambled and studied and played, each imbibing a share of the sunshine and shade wherewith our young life was invested. And black eyes and blue eyes and brown eyes and gray looked up to the face of our mother, as she led us in study, in labor or play, or told of our father and taught us to pray, and to cherish and love one another. Oh, the rapture of being when life is a tune, with the song life and beauty of morning, when the rose at dawn brightens into the noon, and the year hastens on to the splendor of June, in her fragrance and matchless adorning. So our years flirted by, and the youngest of all, our dark-eyed and fun-loving brother, was grown to be manly and lissome and tall, and to courteous titles we answered the call, but were still boys and girls to each other. Oh, the joy of endeavor, endurance, and toil, on through summertime vigor and sweetness, of triumph or that which would hinder or foil, of the patience of hope after tears and turmoil, in the glory of autumn's completeness. And the toil and the turmoil and tears have been ours, from our ranks we have missed a loved brother. We've encountered the thorns, but we've cherished the flowers, we passed under the clouds unto sunnier hours, and we're still boys and girls to each other. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Smile by Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by recording person A Smile The gliding of a fairy form And rosy lips that knew no guile With one departed came to ask Papa, what is a smile? A smile, whatever it is, then stole that gentle parent's features o'er, for ne'er to him had been proposed query so strange before. But while he pondered in his heart how he should to his child reply, a new triumphant joy lit up her loving, lustrous eye. And with this gladsome new-found thought, she answered in her own behalf, Oh, now I know, a smile must be the whisper to a laugh. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Sparrow Alone on the Housetop by Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. Sing, little sparrow, sing thy song, no peril neareth thee. 
Though night be dark, or day be long, or clouds hang low, sing on, sing on, the dear God heareth thee. Sing, little bird, whatever befall, trill out thine utmost need. Thou canst not soar, thou canst not fall, but he will note who knoweth all, and he thy plaint will heed. O oh, little sparrow, far and high, thy soft notes God ward go, and I with thee send up my cry, and both shall somewhere find reply, God careth for us so. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Mother by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Recorded on 9-30-2017 in Boston, Massachusetts O Mother, from thy home beyond the stars Hast thou not known the yearning of thy child? For thy sweet love, hast thou not heard her wild, In piteous moaning, for thy soft caress? Felt her heart's aching for the tenderness, And the low patience of thy loving voice? Hast thou not seen her midlife's toils and jars, Pant as a bird behind its prison bars? For freedom to fly forth and be with thee, and canst thou not, sweet mother, send reply? Oh, through the depths of glory, through the sky, Look for one moment down and say to me, That all of loss on earth thou findest to be, Great gain in heaven, that thou dost rejoice, In all that was, and is, and shall be tied, At last to all, and that in him who died. Yet liveth evermore, I too shall see, All discord blended into harmony, And that I too shall be, as thou art, satisfied. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Psalm 121 Inscribed to my sister, R.S.B. By Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org By Elizabeth Parsons Lift up thine eyes unto the hills A pure and fragrant breath Is wafted from their purple tops The heaven-sent breath of faith Lift up thine eyes unto the hills Beyond their shadowy slope the sun of righteousness doth rise in roseate dawn of hope. Lift up thine eyes into the hills, around, below, above. The holy sky is all aglow with the warm light of love. Lift up thine eyes into the hills, faith, hope, and love are given to point from fading joys of earth to endless joy of heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To RTB by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Recorded on October 2nd, 2017 in Boston, Massachusetts Sister, we know that God is good and he hath led us on by pleasant ways or painful to this day. Our lives went on together until now, in childhood and in youth the same fond home hath been our earthly refuge, the same rock, our shelter when earth had no rest or shade. At the same fancy we have often smiled, for the same sorrow wept and opt our souls. In mingling aspirations have sent up the same thanksgiving, the same burning prayer. Yes, we have lived together. We have known the visible blending of the outward life. Made real by the holier unison of loving spirit 
and aspiring mind. The spells of joy have bound us, and of hope, and tears, which are the diamond links of love, have made the chain of our affection strong. It may be thus no more, yet God is good. I hush the moaning of my ribbon heart, and smile that thou art happy, and give thanks that thy sweet life, rejoicing, hath put on its richard diadem, its crown of love. May the kind father grant that crown to be all worthy of the wearer. May his smile lend brightness to it ever. And at last, when it's laid with earthly robes away, O may the infinite and eternal love rest like a glory on thy radiant brow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On New Year, 1897, by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Christine Lehman, Reseda, California. To G.D. and S.F.B. God bless you through this bright new year, the first you spend together. Give peace and trust through cloudy days, joy in its sunny weather. And may the days as days go by still richer seem and sweeter, and passing seasons make your lives in every good completer. There are not words to tell the love in which I could caress you. Your dear united names I breathe, and once more pray, God bless you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Anna by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Recorded on 9-30-2017 in Boston, Massachusetts. On her sixteenth birthday. Sixteen, and life to thee looks bright and fair, a book unread, rose-tinted, golden-edged, encased in binding, curious, costly rare. And all the years to be thou holdest pledged to give thee from its pages, day by day, readings to cheer and bless the blithesome way. And life is such a volume, only thou, from garnered storage of the heart and mind, must fill unwritten pages and allow fair pictures of pure thought, of self-resigned, of kindly deeds, each new-made page to grace. How best, if none thou, later, once to face. 16. A May Day in the Path of Life A marvelous puzzle on the finger twirled Sixteen again, a stir of earnest strife In toil and tumult in a restless world Repeated still, a patient, steadfast hold On good attained, ripe fruit in grain of gold Sixteen once more serene in shade or sun a brighter outlook now existence grand content and hopes fulfilled and victories won mingling with holier yearnings for that land whose o'erflown radiance and whose surplus bliss have been the glory and the joy of this end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Song of Tens by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Recorded on 9-30-17 in Boston, Massachusetts To Mary At the tenth birthday all the world looks fair The twentieth scarcely shades it with a care 
At the third decade life soars grand and high, but with the fourth its heyday passes by. The fifth comes on, a century's half is told. The sixth, our little girl is growing old. Another half-score milestone passed, and then we've reached the allotted threescore years and ten. Years may be added, should they come to thee, may faith and wisdom their companion be. Hope thy sure anchor, peace with thee abide, and love still by thee light at eventide. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jessica by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Recorded on 9-30-17 in Boston, Massachusetts Make thy name a word of beauty Like the lily pure and fair From its perfumed cup exhaling Sweetest fragrance on the air Make thy name a word of beauty Lustrous as the ocean pearl, Constant in life's loving service, Guileless through youth's mazy whirl. Make thy name a word of beauty, Radiant, steadfast, like a star, Shedding from a glowing center Love's effulgence near and far. Ay, we greet thee, rare sweet maiden, Make it evermore thy right. Jessica, our word of beauty, Lily, pearl, and star of light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Transition by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Arjun Anand. Transition Out of the blindness and the night Into clear and constant light Out of the weariness and pain Into everlasting gain Out of the toil and durance hard Into rest and rich reward Out of the doubting and distress Into certain blessedness Out of the dusty lanes of care Into pastures green and fair out of the glaring desert sun to shades where cooling waters run out of the din of woe and wrong into choral waves of song out of the dwelling worn and old into the city of pearl and gold where now o death where is thy sting thou art the summons to the king o grave where is thy victory thou art the gateway to the free end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a h b by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk a commencement greeting with portraits of eminent authors. Dear Hallam, with this trifling gift, best wishes now I send thee. Through all thy future life, may joy and grace and peace attend thee. May this the bright beginning be of days love crowned and royal. May griefs and faults and foes be few friends manifold and loyal may gems from authors such as these store well thy mental coffer but for thy heart's enrichment please accept the love i offer end of poem this recording is in the public domain To Winnie by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org 
by Bruce Kachuk. On her wedding day. Stars will shine on, though thou art gone, but we shall miss the gleaming of one bright eye's responsive smile and love light softly beaming and flowers will bloom but we shall miss a fragrance and a beauty that brighten for us here and there the somber path of duty and friends will greet us on our way but we shall miss the sweetness of a fair presence that hath made so much of life's completeness and yet tis well we give thee joy and pray with this caressing that love and peace without alloy may be thy bridal blessing end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Life's Work by Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Arjun Anand A Life's Work in memory of Daniel Hill He heard the cry of man and slave In bonds and servile toil And gave his voice for freedom till The freedman tilled free soil He saw his weaker brother reel pierced by drinks, poisoned dart, and wrote and wrote with fervent zeal to stay the tempter's art. He heard the clash of sword and gun in deadly battle strife and pleaded till his day was done for love's sweet rule in life. He risks in peace. Who now shall wear the mantle he let fall? Who teeth as he the father loved the brotherhood of all end of poem this recording is in the public domain visions by hannah lavinia bailey read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk I saw when Israel toiled and groaned beneath the Pharaoh's rod, and in his hopeless bondage moaned his helpless prayer to God. I saw when from the river's brink the infant leader rose, who, reared in Egypt's royal court, still felt his brother's woes. I heard him at the burning bush his swift excuses bring who who am i that i should stand before the egyptian king and who am i that i should lead the people of thy choice my warning word they will not heed nor hearken to my voice and who am i that i should move a monarch to relent i but a man and slow of speech nor wise nor eloquent i marked the answer plead no more thy vain excuse to me i am the lord my servant thou my glory thou shalt see i am the lord the power is mine tis thine to hear and do the lord almighty is to save by many or by few the man of doubt exchanged his fears for faith in god and right while meek obedience on his brow sat like a crown of light the slow of speech grew eloquent till israel gladly heard and bolder waxed the leader till the king's hard heart was stirred and he in fierce displeasure drove the captives from his land not knowing their deliverance was all divinely planned down the long line of two score years i looked 
and saw at last the blissful view from pisca's height the jordan safely passed and heard as memnon's harp had caught the sweet enchanting strain and sent adown the waves of time brave miriam's glad refrain sing for the lord hath triumphed sing great wonders can he do the lord is mighty and can save by many or by few i saw again when sin enslaved by jabin's hand oppressed a people's cry went up to god for rescue and for rest then up rose deborah judge and seer with all her valiant band and drove the oppressor from her gates his chariots from her land and jael wife of heber slew his captain with the sword so woman's hand achieved that day the victory for the lord and woman's voice extolled in song the great deliverer's name praise god he hath avenged his own for willingly they came the mountains melt before his face the tribes their strength renew the lord is mighty and doth save by many or by few i saw when gideon led his band down to the water's bank to prove and set them in array as man by man they drank and with the handful chosen thus went forth against the foe and vanquished all the midian host and laid their princes low not with the thousands called from far who pitched by harrod's well nor yet the undismayed who stood when the faint-hearted fell but now with these three hundred men go forward said the lord do thou thy part let them do theirs trust and obey my word their torches flashed like dancing flames their trumpets loudly blew strange warfare but the lord can save by many or by few once more i saw when israel quailed before philistia's pride while great goliath day by day jehovah's power defied the weak and timid fled away the valiant shrank with fear twas threatened death or dire defeat and life and fame are dear even saul their chosen king forgot admiring israel's boast that he stood head and shoulders high above his martial host and are there none he cried who dare to meet this vaunting foe and must the banner of our god trail in dishonor low then forth there came a ruddy youth that banner i'll defend be it not said our god hath none on whom he may depend let no heart fail to-day because of this philistine's boast the battle is the lord's and he will vanquish this proud host then spake he to the giant foe a loyal servant i of israel's god whose holy name thou darest to defy in that dread name i charge thee stand and shield thee as thou may the fowls of air the beasts of earth shall feast on thee to-day twas but a pebble from the brook sent by a loyal will 
but sword and spear not mightier were god's purpose to fulfill for one may chase a thousand and ten thousand flee from two the god of right is strong to save by many or by few years ages pass and now i see a land beloved and fair and lo a cruel enemy hath gained possession there the riches of this goodly land into his coffers pour insatiate and unscrupulous his constant cry is more more money clinking in my till more men my licensed prey more boys to feed my traffic when these men have passed away thus man is robbed of purse and soul home of its peace and joy the wife of husband is bereft the mother of her boy the land doth mourn on every side the spoiler hath his way no past oppression hath surpassed this vision of to-day and who like moses will exchange his self-distrust and fear for faith to meet the encroaching foe and check his bold career and who like deborah will arise and lead a valiant band to drive the tyrant from her gates the traffic from her land who will like gideon and his men the light of truth dare throw on darkest evil and the trump of coming victory blow or who like david will come forth in god's great name alone and lay the boastful giant low as once with sling and stone when avarice and unholy pride against the good contend the battle is the lord's and he his people will defend the great red sea of wrong while he doth pass shall stand aside mountains shall bow before him and proud jordan's waves divide each epoch hath its burning bush and each its palm tree shade and each its oak of ophra where the pledge of peace is made and each its fold where kingly soul in shepherd guise is found and when the master calleth there the place is holy ground holy the place but who's the hour perchance he calleth thee or thee who who will answer now lord here i am send me oh for the love of land and home make answer brave and true our god is mighty still to save by many or by few end of poem this recording is in the public domain be ye also ready by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk let us be still before him yet once more that voice hath spoken to our startled souls which fell in solemn cadence on the ear of the hushed listeners on mount olive's hill at eventide at midnight or at morn the son of man shall come shall surely come be ready for ye may not know the hour 
and if at eventide when nature folds her toil-spent hands and sinks into repose or if at midnight hour of gloom thou come or when the morning spreads her wings of light oh make us ready for the solemn call supply our need of knowledge wisdom grace dear lord that with confiding joy our souls made pure of sin and strong in faith may go to meet thee at thy coming if the sound of sweet home voices follow to the brink of death's dark river as they fainter grow then let us hear thy still small voice of love say to us it is i be not afraid or if the angel of the icy hand should find us when no human friend is near and summon us away then as we lose our hold of earth and fall away from life o oh, wilt thou grant our parting spirits may go out in silence and be found with thee End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mimosa by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by recording person. Mimosa. A modest plant, soft shades of green, in leaflets poised on slender stem, and all outspread to catch the glow of morning sun or dew drop gem. But lo, what change, when finger-tips But touch the leaflet's fringe the charm Of life is gone, mimosa shrinks, As conscious of some present harm. So would I have my soul recoil From touch of wrong or thought of sin, So throw its portals wide again To let the dew and sunshine in. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At the Crisis by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. 1. The Steamboat Bells. When steamboats approach Mount Vernon, their bells begin to toll and continue the mournful service until the sacred spot is again left in the distance mount vernon's shade sweet vigil keeps where on her breast her hero sleeps o oh, passing bells soft be your tone toll gently for our washington toll the great warrior's strife is o'er toll for the statesman pleads no more toll for a man is fallen on peel out your dirge for washington toll for a people's wounded heart toll for a bleeding nation's smart toll for a world toll sadly on the world hath lost a washington ring out your wailing on the air and let it be a voice of prayer he whom we greatly need is gone god give another washington 1863 thus while she listened to the mournful knell that woke sad echoes on potomac's shore saw how from sumter's height her banner fell and heard not distant far loud battles roar thus while she heard the impatient bondman's moan knew her own power defied her trust betrayed while treason rose to hurl her from her throne the spirit of the union mused and prayed two the emancipator god gave another 
while we stood aghast before the coming flood of war and its attending woes the one for whom she prayed arose blinded and deaf we knew him not yet saw him wipe out slavery's blot heard him proclaim his people free from lake to gulf from sea to sea saw this and heard but deaf and blind we failed to recognize the mind which going on from strength to strength from grace to grace had grown at length through the stern lessons of the hour of danger censure praise and power to be the man among us one whom now we hail since he is gone lincoln are more than washington 1866 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Death of Dr. James E. Rhodes by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Fallen? No, his part was finished in the earthly toil and strife he hath but lain his armor by and entered into life silent no though hushed forever tones that did like music thrill through example helpful holy lo he speaketh still vanished lost to those that loved him no his spirit lingering near still doth woo them onward upward whispering be of cheer crowned ay crowned in earth and heaven here with laurels fairly won there with starlit diadem inscribed well done well done End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Eternal Youth by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Looking in thine eyes of azure, looking on thy hair of gold, once I wished evangelina that there were no growing old for i thought of how thy sweet eyes would grow dim with tears and care how the years would turn to silver all thy wealth of golden hair how the lines of life would gather o'er the face so placid now traces of its toil and struggle touching lip and cheek and brow this i thought and wished the shadows might not lengthen o'er thy way wished there were no time but springtime were no evening of the day now i fear evangelina that my wish was half a prayer that the listening father heard me that thou liest an answer there for thou liest in thy beauty eyes of blue and hair of gold lip and cheek and brow of marble folded fingers still and cold o oh, my angel god hath called thee where there is no growing old end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Building Time by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Christine Lehman, Reseda, California. The time of the singing of birds is come. Tis the happiest time of the year. They are saying, let's build us our summer home, for the frost king no longer we fear. The time of the singing of birds is come, and the time of their building, too. With a feather, a straw, and a stray bit of gum, they will show what bird builders can do. The time of the singing of birds is come. I was eavesdropping under the trees, and as I translated the twitter and hum, I thought the words sounded like these. Twit a whir, twit a whir, the young leaves are astir. We will make us a nest snug and warm on this apple tree bough. We are at it even now, all secure from intruders and storm. Tis for home, tis for love, tis for heaven above. And our roof is the clear azure sky, the foundations we lay in this rough straw and clay, but we'll line it with moss by and by. The time of the singing of birds is here, and if under the apple tree bough, Orlando and May would a domicile rear, let them hear what the birds tell them now. Build for home, build for love, build for heaven above, build with music and cheer like the birds, and if palace or cot, built of marble or what, line your nest with the moss of kind words. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sunrise by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Michael Fascio. The incident here narrated occurred some years ago at the Media Training School for Feeble Minded Children, then in care of Dr. I. N. Curlin. A feeble idiot boy he stood where nature in her beauty grew, and over field and flowering wood her summer mantle lightly threw. The scene had met his eye before, the pleasant path he oft had trod, and one who sought in simple lore to teach him things of heaven and God, had often wandered with him there, and pointed out each lovely spot, the sunlit cloud, the floweret fair, but still he comprehended not. For all his soul was void and still, and darkness held his mind in thrall. He recognized no sovereign will, nor saw the hand of God in all. In nature's presence now alone he stood, and filled with silent awe, beheld, before the coming sun, the curtained night in haste withdraw. And gazing there with vacant eye, all motionless and mute he waits, when, lo, the chariot of the sky rolls through the morning's crimson gates. The orient beams with beauteous light. Hath not his soul its radiance caught? His being grasps a new delight. A deep, mysterious change is wrought. A light is kindled in his breast. A temple veil at length is riven. And in that hour of strange unrest a thought is born of God in heaven. In haste he seeks his tutor's side, for he who bore in grief a part will, in this happy hour of pride, responsive hail his joy of heart. The glowing cheek, the flashing eye, the parting lips, not voiceless now, and caught from that resplendent sky the marvelous light upon his brow, while these, ere yet he speaks, attest the rapture which that thought has given. He lifts his finger towards the east, and softly whispers, God in heaven. O oh, blessed hour, and happy he to whom throw patient love t'was given, to set a fettered spirit free, and wake a hope of God in heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kneel Dow by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Written for a Memorial Day service. A soul was stirred as one through blinding tears rehearsed a tale of want and cruel wrong. 
keen indignation banished doubts and fears the purpose of imperial youth grew strong a voice was heard alas that on the side of sin and mad oppression there is power but we will change all this if god so aid and maine's new freedom dated from that hour a life was given fraught with noble deeds aflame with words of truth and tireless zeal and boldness for the right that gave no heed to threatening hate or sycophant's appeal but men decried the fervor of that soul and would have hushed the voice that pleaded still against the oppressor's power and such control as brought them gain all others loss and ill and men denounced that life and where it came oft times their scoffings tainted the sweet air as with malicious scorn they hailed a name that calumny itself left clean and fair and now that soul hath entered into rest that voice is silent and that peerless life hath crossed the threshold where the good and blessed enter and cease from sorrow toil and strife o life and voice and soul o princely one our loyal hearts send greeting to thee now thy name has lighted near a century gone twill brighten ages yet to come kneel down end of poem this recording is in the public domain paradise will pay for all by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. last words of samuel a purdy from the charm of idle pleasure from ambition's siren song from the rush for earthly treasure of the busy careless throng in the dawn of life's fair morning he had heard the master's call yea i come his heart made answer paradise will pay for all on through years of toil and struggle walked he faithful to his word blameless life and kind entreaty leading many to the lord meeting dangers bearing burdens well might stoutest heart appall but to every doubt replying paradise will pay for all now at eve toil spent and weary pierced with pain the pilgrim lay watching still with faith triumphant for the dawn of brighter day then upon his ear there falleth once again the master's call come up higher yea he answers paradise will pay for all end of poem this recording is in the public domain Forgiveness by Hannah Lavinia Bailey, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Father in heaven, I thank thee for this hour, this blessed hour wherein my contrite soul, humbled and happy, bows itself to thee, pleading that all its error and its sin may be forgiven, even as I forgive. The cruel wrong swept o'er me like a flood 
and my hurt soul in fierce defiance rose and all forgetful that itself could sin heaped heavy hatred on the offender's head then came a calmer hour in which i saw the strong temptation that had moved him thus to barter all his better life away love honour principle to gain the world and seeing this i learned to pity him for well i knew the bauble he had won would only mock him with its faithless glare and well i knew the golden fruit he grasped would be but dust and ashes in his hand and knowing this i learned to pity him and as my pity grew it turned to prayer that when the glitter of the gold was gone and the sweet fruit was bitter to his taste when the sad memory of the slighted past came and made deeper still the present gloom the darkness might be lifted and the soul self-robbed and famishing might find its way to the green pastures and the springs of life that in the heart whence love and joy had fled whence hope was exiled there might yet be peace but suddenly i queried in my heart what power had moved me that i should have prayed for him i counted as my lifelong foe greatly i marvelled that it meant that thus i had called down such blessing on him the kindliest boon of heaven the peace of god deep in my soul there came an answering voice o oh, child it is but this thou hast forgiven then thanks o oh, father for this blessed hour wherein my soul by thine own spirit taught prays with no mockery of words thy prayer forgive my trespasses as I forgive. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Lost Song by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by recording person. A Lost Song. Horror of combat and tumult and dread. Thunder of cannon and bursting of bomb. Moans of the wounded who envy the dead, lost in the clamour of trumpet and drum. Oh, where is the song of the angels? Oh, when shall we hear it again? Peace on earth rang the chorus seraphic, and goodwill evermore among men. Here is fierce anger and hatred and death, pitiless slaughter of pitiless foe, blessings and curses poured forth in a breath, brave self-forgetting and measureless woe. But where is the song of the angels? Oh, when shall we hear it again? Peace on earth rang the chorus seraphic, and goodwill evermore among men. Blue eyes of ocean are reddened with gore, victor and victim, earth holds to her breast. Hearts that will thrill with ambition no more, heads that so lately fond mothers caressed. Oh, where is the song of the angels? Oh, when shall we hear it again? Peace on earth rang the chorus seraphic, and goodwill evermore among men. Victory purchased at infinite cost. Honours and titles so fearfully won. Fame at the price of lives blighted and lost. Graves all unnoted, unnumbered, unknown. Oh, where is the song of the angels? Dear Christ, let us hear it again. Peace on earth, send the chorus seraphic. Peace on earth and goodwill among men. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A New Earth by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. I have dreamed a sweet dream. I have seen a fair vision. I have looked the wide universe o'er. And earth's nations arise in a glory, a lition. They do not learn war any more. There are music and mirth. There are childhood's sweet voices, winsome age lends its placid charm there. There are laughter and glee, as when home life rejoices, unshadowed by sorrow or care. In all noble achievement, all worthy endeavor, men in kindly ambition contend. But the valiant of heart may yet know he hath ever in his sturdiest foeman a friend never more the proud boast or the haughty defiance 
without end shall his kingdom increase tis the day of all nations in holy alliance tis the reign of truth justice and peace never more shall a nation lift sword against nation the dominion of hatred is o'er tis the triumph of love tis the dawn of christ's kingdom they shall not learn war any more end of poem this recording is in the public domain recall by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk put up thy sword o nation grand and strong call in thy fleet-winged missiles from the sea art thou not great enough to suffer wrong land of the brave the freest of the free put up thy sword tis nobler to endure than to avenge thee at another's cost and while thy claim and purpose are made sure behold that other's life and honour lost put up thy sword it hath not hushed the cry that called it all too rashly from its sheath still o'er the fated isle her children lie and find surcease from anguish but in death put up thy sword o country strong and free let strife and avarice and oppression cease so shall the world thy star of empire see resplendent o'er the heaven-touched hills of peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Philistia's Triumph by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. First Samuel chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, and chapter 7, verse 3 written on the defeat of the prohibition amendment in pennsylvania they fought with lances in that ancient day with sword and spear and arrow deftly sped at eventide the hosts of israel lay vanquished and spoiled the dying with the dead and the ark of god was taken they fought with ballots in our nearer day from morn to eve the light-winged missiles flew again philistia's triumph brought dismay and wrong victorious struggling virtue slew and the ark of god was taken o ye to whom the sacred trust was given to guard the altar and the ark of god have ye been recreant to the charge of heaven that thus we fall before the avenging rod and the ark of god is taken rouse from your shameful slumbers put away your strange gods from among you turn again that in the drawing of some nobler day the hosts of sin may be rebuked of men and the ark of god retaken end of poem this recording is in the public domain the white ribbon army by hannah lavinia bailey read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk air king bibbler's army for m b t in the years years ago when the true-hearted women started forth on their errand of prayer many said tis the cry of the home for protection many said tis delusion and snare some said softly god bless you some murmured 
mistaken some the swift shafts of calumny hurled but they went bravely forward a praying procession marching out 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 in the world hark hark a trembling chorus no 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 we cannot have rum ruling o'er us no 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 and now to save our young men the white ribbon army marches on 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 round the world at the head of the host came the silver-haired mothers arm in arm with the daughters so fair while the wives for their husbands the girls for their brothers raised their voices to heaven in prayer as their pleadings prevail and the worst foe surrenders the white banner of peace is unfurled and we now may behold them a joyful procession marching on 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 round the world hark hark a swelling chorus no 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 we cannot have rum ruling o'er us no 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 and oh to save our country the white ribbon army marches on 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 round the world they have entered the gates of the empire celestial they have compassed the isles of the sea and they carry glad tidings of good to all people from the land of the brave and the free on the peerus of england on Afric's dark daughter is the white ribbon emblem now twirled and the army moves onward a dauntless procession marching on 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 round the world hark hark a ringing chorus no 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 we cannot have rum ruling o'er us no 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 and lo to save all nations the white ribbon army marches on 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 round the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain christmas by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk dawn of glory radiant morn today the christ our king is born our king our savior son of man and son of god all wondrous plan a virgin's joy a world's salvation humblest type of exaltation highest form of life despised visage marred and beauty prized by angels heralded on high by men abhorred and doomed to die entombed secure neath seal and stone uprisen to the eternal throne hail blessed light hail glorious morn the wonderful the christ is born end of poem this recording is in the public domain a day in june by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. the early dawn looked out upon the world and cried how beautiful a world to be the dawn herself was beautiful to see her hair of glowing golden light uncurled about a face of clear serenity whereon rose-tinted smiles played daintily and free i fare the earth she said most fair and yet how can i for one briefest space forget how dark a stain its loveliness doth mar a stain a scourge the cruel curse of war 
even now i dimly see and faintly hear the clang of drum the clash of sword and spear and pale with pity swift she shrank away leaving the world and war to broader day the sun at noon looked down upon the world from depths of vast ethereal blue looked down and mused you far fair earth sure we must crown queen of the universe great flags unfurled o'er her bright waters witness high renown won by her creature man ay bring for earth a crown yet stay there riseth over afric plains a cloud of battle smoke with crimson stains her rivers run her hills and meadows fair trampled by hostile hordes lie waste and bare and yonder in the islands of the sea a people struggle vainly to be free and everywhere the banners of fair fame trail in the dust of hatred greed and shame no crown for earth i mourn so bright a star lost in the chaos of consuming war and veiled in robe of woe he went his way borne by the passing hours to close of day the twilight lingered and the evening star looked back upon the world and whispered low these who have spoken surely could not know earth is a great pure pearl and seems from far set with fair homes like gems in amber glow or emerald green or gold or roseate snow but hush in palace hall a bitter cry a mangled hero is born in to die and in yon lowly cot a widow's moan a mother's heartbreak o'er her only son alas tis true earth's battlefields destroy her noblest manhood rob her homes of joy and sad the star of evening sank from sight while earth lay shrouded in the gloom of night but from afar beyond the morning's birth beyond the depths whence sun looked down on earth beyond the dreamy distance of the star a voice proclaimed they shall no more learn war end of poem this recording is in the public domain today by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk light on my pathway blessed lord the light of life i pray o oh, let the glory of thy word shine o'er my life to-day i cry to thee for present help turn not my prayer away o strength and refuge of thine own keep thou my soul to-day my willing but uncertain feet guide in thy chosen way and let thy grace sufficient be for all my need to-day end of poem this recording is in the public domain losing victories by hannah lavinia bailey read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. my infant class one summer morn 
was gathered in the maple shade near the church door and there we talked of the fair world our lord had made the swaying trees upon the hill the waving grain the shadowy grove till every little heart seemed filled with the sweet sense of jesus's love a query came dear little ones as days go by what shall we do since jesus has so loved us all to show him that we love him too i'll mind mamma said wilful tim and ben i'll carry in the wood said mary i will lessons learn while dimple lisped i will be dood and how will helen show her love she with a wistful glance at rose a sweet but pale and timid child replied by giving up i suppose dear girl to fragile sister rose she oft must yield her will and way but now this duty shall disclose her love for jesus day by day oh oft were we but wise we'd find our triumph in another's gain on glowing altar coals of love would joy to see self-idols slain in simplest ways the soul may drink with christ the sacrificial cup and many a victory is won and nobly won by giving up end of poem this recording is in the public domain not mine by hannah lavinia bailey read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk thy will thy way not mine o blessed lord my will would choose the smooth and pleasant way and that might lead from duty's path astray nay i would walk according to thy word choosing thy way not mine thy peace my gracious saviour would i choose my peace might lead me man not god to please might lure my soul to take its selfish ease and gaining all the world itself to lose give me thy peace not mine thy will thy way thy peace thou knowest best let me but see the guiding of thine eye let me but know thy voice and swift reply my soul shall make to every known behest doing thy will not mine End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Desert by Hannah Lavinia Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Ah, me! What life since hers in age agone hath not known Hagar's hour in desert wild? outcast from sheltering home adrift alone bereft of love's sweet ministry her child her heart's one treasure late so fond and fair become a burden more than she could bear all earth and sky a strange enfolding scroll writ o'er with nameless pain and sense of need to which nor pitying eye nor ear gave heed till came the thought of god even so the soul consumed with vain regret and doubt and dread as she upon the barren sand her boy lays all at once had counted hope and joy upon the desolate waste itself had spread self-abnegating 
though with bitter cry i yield thee but i cannot see thee die but passing thence the agonizing plea faith transforms into tuneful harmony glad to remember thou god seest me end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Phantom in the Circle by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Start not, good friends, there was a time When I, whom fate in kindly mood Made brief sojourner in your clime Was glad partaker of the good that from your circle emanated. And as the seven days went round, the appointed fourth day evening found. Me with its members congregated, and also now I recognize the smiling lips and beaming eyes of some who, cordial, kind and free, had smiles and loving words for me, who, when I entered, rose to greet, and welcome gave, sincere and sweet. But that was many years ago, and now there may be wrinkles on my brow. There may have fled from form and face the transient charms of youth and grace. And time and sadness may have thrown a shadow o'er the chestnut brown of locks that once, well, let that pass. These are but sorrowful reflections, and like those of my looking glass, do but discover imperfections. So let us leave this train of thought and start in happier directions. But first, I think it may be due alike unto myself and you, lest some should think I may have brought my ghostly presence here unsought to make this note of explanation that not for pride or praise or gloom, or curious motive, am I come. Nor yet for want of occupation, far from intruding thus I would, have it distinctly understood, I am here by special invitation. Here, and my phantom pulses quicken, Pale memories gather round me fast, And now they grow, and gleam and thicken, And fan me with their wings of light, And bear me to realm more bright Than fairy land or elfin home, Or that sweet world whence dreams do come, The heaven of a happy past. Familiar faces on me smile, Remembered voices greet my ear, And social converse gives the while The old-time wisdom and good cheer. But while we're all engaged in chat, Of work, of weather, and all that, And voices rise, and smiles grow broader, preceding dignity comes forth with modest but amazing worth and calls the whole concern to order then minutes penned by snow white hand approved without dissension stand and hushed as all the talk and noise the while some soft 
or manly voice. From gifted author doth unfold before us treasures new and old. We grant them rare, yet lay them by our intellectual strength to try in essay, speech, and declamation. We reverence the might of mind, but here our homespun thoughts still find a kindlier appreciation. With hushed breath and eyes that glisten, to some fine argument we listen. From one with head so full of lore, that to prevent its brimming ore, we must impart his information, the which he does by book and rule, achieving in the village school, and never ceasing reformation. With rapt attention now we hear a discourse upon sound and ear wherein is beauty blended the science and the history the knowledge and the mystery so fair when fairly comprehended then some poetic brain is fired some secret spring unlocked for a brother brings with love inspired Kind thoughts in glowing words attired, and praise at once with heart and pen, and all the people say, Amen. God bless the country doctor. And lesser lights send out a gleam of intellectual glory, and many a grave or playful theme or fact profound or doubtful dream, or song, or allegory, beguiles the gloom of winter night, and makes the slow hours swift and light. To social pleasure adds a charm, makes young hearts wise and old hearts warm, and life a pleasant story. O oh, friends, I live it o'er again, I cross the gulf twixt now and then, and live that happy time again, its very joy and brightness all. The crowded room, the lighted hall, the merry laugh, the friendly nod, and bless the fate that brought. But no, let us not read these chances so. Fate is not the sovereign will of God. He marks the paths of mortals trod, and he appoints our joy and woe. Then bless we God, whose gracious hand hath led us gently on our way. By whose good will today we stand, rejoicing that we live today, by whose sweet mercy yet we trust, that all of us, which is not dust, from time and toils of earth shall rise to nobler life beyond the skies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Valentine by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Up in the same sweet heaven, though potted far, We too may see at even the same bright star. So the same blessed guide star of love divine Illumes with its glory thy path and mine. When thoughts of these, of heaven, and love are thine, 
be one kind memory given thy valentine end of poem this recording is in the public domain a convention hymn by hannah lavina bailey read for LibriVox.org by scott kelly bless us now our heavenly father as we gather once again and unite our hearts and voices in a grateful glad refrain praises for a father's bounty praises for a savior's reign guide us by thy holy spirit lead us in thy perfect way show us as we strive to serve thee what to do and what to say teach us how to work and suffer how to watch and how to pray gracious lord we come with pleading for attempted brother's sins at the open door of mercy praying thou will take him in sin sick hot sore and repentant let him know new life begin and we bring our sister moaning over blighted hope and home robbed of all life's best possessions by the ruthless spoiler rum to her rest in thy compassion bid thy heavy laden come and we pray o god of nations that thine outstretched arm of might may rebuke the prowling evil may drive back the powers of night and preserve us home and country overruled by love and right end of poem this recording is in the public domain a collection song by hannah lavina bailey read for librivox.org by scott kelly A collection song for the Loyal Temperance Legion. Kind friends, we thank you one and all for giving us such attention while we've arranged old alcohol and all his faults made mention. And if you'd like to see him now, put in a pretty pickle. Just lend a hand and help us on by giving us a nickel. He stalks the earth from east to west, a deal of mischief doing. But we are on the warpath now, old alcohol pursuing. So if you'd like to see him caught and punished for his crime, sir, just lend a hand and help us on by tossing us a dime, sir. He robs our homes of peace and joy. He fills a land with sighing. Sets snares and pitfalls for our feet. He'd better be a dying. So if you think he should be slain, as we believe he'd utter just lend a hand and help us on by handing out a quarter. He boasts himself a king by law and license well protected. But now the children are afield. We'll have him soon ejected. So if you'd like to see us tackle him and take him by the collar, just lend a hand and help us on 
by dropping in a dollar. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.